Good morning, YouTubers. Um, name is Jerry. Just giving you an update on the troubleshooting procedures of an LS400. Um, do want to give a couple shout outs to uh, uh, Chris Fix on his video, uh, which led me to uh, the basics, uh, which was also uh, communicating with LS Cowboy, which also does the LS400 ECUs. Definitely look for him. He does quality work. He's awesome. Uh, both these individuals are, are truly helpers, uh, uh, people trying to figure stuff out. Um, definitely go to people. Um, so just FYI. Anyway, LS400. Um, I changed the caps and rotors. Had a no start symptom. It seemed like I had to start it 30 or 40 times. It just did not want to start. And I feel like an idiot. Um, I pulled off each plug wire on the distributor cap and I noticed that I had spark, um, which I did. Um, and then I started questioning, um, fuel, fuel delivery. And, uh, so basically I had to go through all the basic checks. You have to go through the basic checks. If you are trying to start your vehicle and it does not give you a system code, uh, a check engine light code. First of all, if you turn your ignition key in the on position on any car, on any vehicle, whether it's a Lexus or American made car, you turn the key in the on position and not in start, you do not see the check engine light. That means there is no communication to that computer. Firstly, if that check engine light is not on, when you turn it in the on position, there is no communication, meaning there's something wrong with your, your ECU. If you do have it, that means you have communication, meaning that it is working. Um, mine had the light on, so I was discarding that. Tried to start it. Sometimes it start, sometimes it wouldn't. Seemed like forever for it to start. And then um, it would start. On an LS400, if it starts, but it runs horrible, it sounds like it's got a lot of back pressure on the, well, in my situation, on the uh, exhaust, it sounded like it was coming from the back. Um, it sounded like a tank. It just ran like a tank. It ran horrible. Um, these are symptoms of, you know, something out of sync, timing, um, so, first of all, it didn't want to start, uh, and when it does, it might kick a code for a cam position sensor. In my situation, it took forever for it to kick up a cam position sensor, but the crazy thing, when I found everything out, it wasn't. It's basically the computer knowing that the cams are out of sync. Something's off. So, I went through... Chris Fix, uh, you know, his video, and you got to think basic. I talked to LS Cowboy, uh, and he's, he's pretty awesome. Again, um, strength is in numbers and friends. Don't listen to the Yahoos that don't know a damn thing. Uh, but anyway, the main thing what you want to do is do your basics of spark, fuel, or air. Make sure there's no constriction or restrictions in the air. Nine times out of ten, it's not. But not to say that there's not a, uh, I don't know, a wasp's nest, mud dauber's nest built into the throttle body or intake and stuff like that. You never know. Uh, there are crazy things that happen. And that's not to say that there might be an electrical burnt wire, but just do your basics. Um, make sure the air... To the throttle body is clear make sure it is open um, those are less likely to be the problem the second thing don't overthink the uh, the fuel situation um, you can go to uh, O'Reilly's or, or AutoZone and get the banjo bolt and the fuel pressure and make sure it's got all this pressure and all this other stuff you just need to know if you got fuel there are two lines on the side of the motor 
on the driver's side. One's a hard line, and it's got like a, looks like a brake, uh, uh, like a, a a bolt that goes into another metal sleeve, and that's a hard line. And then there's a rubber line that is next to the dipstick tube, and that is your fuel. The hard line is the supply. The rubber line is the return. Of course, you you know, there's two different ways of checking fuel, but I want to make sure I had fuel supply. So, in my situation, I broke the line open, uh, turned the key in the on position, and I had fuel. The second thing that I did, since I knew I had quite a bit of fuel coming out when I turned the key in the on position, I knew I had fuel. The third thing that I did to make sure that everything was working was I pulled each uh, spark plug wire on, from the cap on the top side to make sure I had spark. I had spark to each wire, not the coil, not the middle one, but on the two to each side, so I had spark. So if I know that I got fuel and I've got spark and I've got air, the next thing to check is your timing. Yes, it's a pain in the ass, but if you know you got spark to each wire, you know you got fuel, it's a timing issue. Pull off your cap and rotors, pull off the plastic covers, put the crank at uh, zero, top dead center, check your number one cylinder, check the cranks, something fouled in your timing double check it because if you don't have that it doesn't matter what you do it doesn't matter if you add sensors it doesn't matter that you put brand new stuff in it if your timing is off your ignition is working it's just not firing at the right time if you got fuel it's not going to fire the fuel at the right time your timing is off that means either a cam one of your cams is off or your crank or your belt's busted or whatever the way that LS400s work is this: the computer, if it's an interference motor, it will kill, the computer will kill the ignition or the fuel or both to make sure there's not ca catastrophic failure. That's just my two cents. I figured I'd help you guys out. Check your timing. If you got fuel and fire and you got air, check your fire and check your timing.